Genji is great right now, arguably the best he's ever been in Overwatch 2, to the point where he has replaced Mei in a brawl composition. This may seem counterintuitive, since Mei counters Genji, right? Well, don't ask me. Ask the best teams in the world. This video looks at a match between Crazy Raccoons and Zeta Division, where Hisang shows us not only how good Genji is, but how pro Genjis can actually use him to counter Mei, at least in this meta. Hanaoka starts out with mostly mirrored compositions, Arisa, Juno, Brigida, and Cassidy, with the one difference being that Hisang is on Genji, whereas Alpha Yi is on Mei. Zeta Division roll out stacked together on the low ground, whereas Crazy Raccoon does the same on high ground. However, unlike Alpha Yi who is stacked, Hisang is split from their team, poking from an off angle. Zeta Division start taking more control of the low ground, so Hisang opts to rotate towards the point. While Zeta keep trying to force them out, armor packs from Churong keep Hisang right where they want to be. Even Bernard stepping up to fight cannot get the Genji off of point. During these interactions, Junbin has taken the stairs down and is now on an angle directly to the right of Bernard as point unlocks. Things already look bad for Zeta, with Hisang capturing point, Junbin on the side, and Lip shooting down on them, Bernard has to make something happen. They step onto point, using Fortify to try to force out Hisang, but this is when disaster strikes. While Bernard was fighting point, Alfie had their ice block forced by the poke from Lip on the high ground. The moment they come out of ice, it's a free elimination for Junbin and Hisang, who run in and get picks on Alpha Yi, Bernard, and Finn. Violet gets the trade onto Chorong, but it's not nearly enough, so Zeta Division has to reset and give this point to Crazy Raccoons. This fight highlights a key advantage that Genji can abuse over Mei, mobility. Both heroes have tools to survive in Deflect and Ice Block, but while Mei has Wall, Genji has a dash and a double jump. Combine these with the smaller hitbox, and Hisang can be way more flexible with their positioning than Alpha Yi. This means that Hisang can take this angle on the low ground with little fear of dying, since they can simply dash away at the first sight of danger. Furthermore, this is not a randomly selected angle. Hisang is much smarter than that. If the other team were to contest Hisang in their original angle, or when they move to point, they're walking right into Lip's line of sight, who would happily click on their heads as they do so. Even disregarding the overall positioning of each team, Alpha Yi just can't pressure the point like Hisang can. If Hisang gets pressured and has to deflect, it's a simple matter of dashing away, whereas if Alpha Yi has to use Ice Block, it's a free elimination gifted to Crazy Raccoons. So not only can Alpha Yi not duel Hisang when they're on the point, Alpha Yi couldn't act as point pressure if Hisang was somewhere else. Even though Mei should win the 1v1 with a Genji, by utilizing their superior mobility and taking intelligent angles, Hisang was able to pretty much kiss Alpha Yi the entire team fight while also pressuring point, and there was nothing Zeta Division could do about it. The next team fight starts with Bernard and Alpha Yi on the point for some early poke, while their backline sits behind and abuses the high ground. Crazy Raccoons shift to the left side to try to take control of the bell space, so Zeta matches. This is a good time to point out some of May's biggest advantages in this matchup. Range and defense. Icicles do 170 damage to the head and have no falloff, making them a pretty devastating poke tool, certainly better than Genji's shurikens. Moreover, so long as Flora holds the high ground and has a good view of point, Hisang's only real safe pathway is past the bell, where they would be met with Junbin and Alpha Yi, who would happily send them back to spawn. In a position like this, it really does feel suffocating for a Genji. Mei is a lot more lethal in the poke phase, and she is completely stopping Hisang from playing aggressive. Hisang isn't completely outmatched here, though, because as much as the Mei is stopping their aggression, she's doing it at a cost. Mei is almost never picked at this level to counter Genji. She's picked to put pressure on the enemy team's tank, specifically to force cooldowns sooner or to use her slow to stop that tank from playing aggressively. Using this knowledge, Hisang can make the Genji work even if it looks like they're completely at a disadvantage. Junbin moves toward the point and swings as wide as they can, forcing a response from Zeta Division. Alpha Yi, who wants to be stopping the Genji and the Arisa, is now forced to choose which one. They choose the Arisa, so Hisang starts to move up. Eventually, Alpha Yi turns to look at the Genji, so while Hisang runs away to get away from the Mei damage, Junbin moves up, establishing a relatively safe place to play on the point. To make this play simple, Mei just has too many decisions that she has to make. She's supposed to be stopping the advance of a Genji and a tank, so whenever these two split, she's forced to make the decision. So whoever she doesn't end up stopping gets to move forward. The moment that she turns around to stop the Genji, Junbin moves forward. By doing this, they were in the end able to establish a place for Junbin to stand on the point. This makes it so that Crazy Raccoons can both capture the point and also put pressure on the other team. Even better, this isn't necessarily a coordinated play between Hisang and Junbin, but instead this is simply an aggressive push from the Crazy Raccoons, and both players know what to look out for to take a position and stay there. That's good news for you, since it means you can apply that in your comp games, even if your tank isn't Junbin and you aren't Hisang. With this much more aggressive position, Crazy Raccoons push hard with their Juno ult, and similar to first fight, they're able to force Alpha Yi's ice block so that Hisang can catch Alpha Yi lacking without it and secure the kill. Hisang does so with Blade, and then blah, blah, blah. Hisang does so with Blade, and then secures a few more, winning this fight for the Crazy Raccoons. This next team fight features some interesting stuff, so pay close attention. 
Kisang uses the same ideas from first fight to touch point, abusing cover and positioning to punish anyone who's about to try to contest. It's simply too risky for Zeta Division's squishies to touch, so Bernard has to use spin to make it to point. Kisang goes for a very interesting dash onto a fortified Orisa, losing their angle and using a cooldown. While this play looks odd at first, I believe that Hisang may have been trying to catch Bernard lacking, and hit the dash followed by a right click before Bernard could fortify, which would effectively guarantee the kill. While this does end up mistimed, it forces a response from Alfie, who uses their wall to try, and fail, to eliminate Hisang. Zeta Division's supports also step up to try to help, which makes them really susceptible to Junbin, who uses their ultimate, eliminating two. Right after the Terra Surge goes down, Alfie, who realized that Junbin has neither Fortify nor their ultimate, is susceptible to Blizzard. They toss it down, getting the elimination. Hisang whips out the Dragon Blade, eliminating Flora, and just barely loses track of Finn. If Hisang had hit this Slash, it would have ended Finn and most likely won this map for Crazy Raccoons. With this life that Luck has gifted them, Finn drops their ultimate to help stall the point, and with some quick swaps on the side of Zeta, they are able to finish off the remaining members of the Raccoons, winning this teamfight. All is well on the side of the best team in the world, though, as they picked up a tick during this teamfight, netting them a point. It's worth noting that Violet has moved over to Kiriko instead of Brig at this point. This was done to TP out of spawn and touch point faster during the stall, but as far as the overall matchup goes, it doesn't change much as far as Mei versus Genji. The next teamfight is pretty similar to the second, but instead of playing the point, Bernard and Alfie start up on the high ground, aiming to abuse their superior poke. Kisang and Chorong work their way up to the right side to make Bernard leave. Bernard moves over to mirror Junbin's rotation, and Alfie Yi stacks with their backline, effectively telling Hisang that if they dare to dash in, they will be tarred and feathered by Mei's left click. Unfortunately, Crazy Raccoons are unable to make the same play they did last time, with Junbin and Hisang taking turns walking forward, since Junbin gets their fortify forced without Hisang actually being able to walk up, because they were dueling Flora. With Junbin having to fortify early, there isn't much that Crazy Raccoons can do here other than try to force something to happen, so Lip pops the Deadeye, trying to force some respect on the space. Once this fails, Alfie Yi and Bernard remove Junbin from reality with Blizzard. Once again, trying to force the fight win despite poor circumstances, Hisang invests the Dragon Blade, and Chorong is even willing to run it down into the enemy backline to enable it. While this decision ends up getting both Hisang and Chorong eliminated, it wasn't all for naught, since Crazy Raccoons managed to trade out, picking up two eliminations for Zeta Divisions 3. Chorong's play here is a good indicator of another reason Genji is just better right now, being the dominance of Brigida. Brig Juno has a near 100% pick rate in Brawl Comps right now, and Genji's mobility, as well as the fact that he gets dash back after each elimination, lets him go much more aggressive than a Mei can. More than that, Mei's vulnerability without ice block stops her from taking many risks, whereas Genji can roam the map. All in all, this makes Genji a prime target to abuse Brigida's armor packs. I mean, let's look at some of these teamfights. On the first fight, with the combination of being on the off angle and touching the point, Chorong actually gives six armor packs to Hisang. If we look at the third fight, where a lot of ults were traded and Hisang started by touching point, Hisang received four separate armor packs from Chorong in this period. And in this next team fight, where Chorong took an off angle with Hisang and then enabled the Dragon Blade, Hisang received five different armor packs. As you can see, one of the main motivations for Crazy Raccoons to play Genji is just to abuse how good Brigida is at enabling one hero. Anyways, back to the current situation. Having just ulted, Hisang actually swaps over to Symmetra. This seems strange, but on game modes where single team fights can mean a point for the opponents, you will actually see this fairly often. On push, flashpoint, and clash, it's a simple strategy to swap to Symmetra for team fights when they don't have a clear winner. This lets Hisang teleport their team and themselves out of spawn faster, attempting to win this chaotic team fight. It doesn't actually end up mattering though, because much like my father from the milk store, Crazy Raccoons are really, really late. They fail to get to the point in time, and Hisang gets picked, immediately swapping back to Genji. Crazy Raccoons concede space to make time for Hisang's return, and then play the next team fight as if they're on attack. Hisang swings to the low ground side of point with the help of Chorong and Lip, while Junbin pushes the point. Zeta Division try to counterpish Junbin, walling them off and speed ringing in. While they successfully force Fortify, they can't put any significant damage onto Junbin, and even worse, Alpha Yi gets Ice Block forced. Yet again, we see the lack of mobility on this hero being a complete liability for Zeta Division. Violet, however, isn't ready to let Alpha Yi get hate crime by Hisang for a third time, so they pop Kitsune, putting much more pressure on the lane and allowing the Mei to safely return to her team. While I'd love to analyze the rest of this fight in great detail, it's less of a team fight and more of an EDM concert. Collectively, eight ultimates were used and Crazy Raccoon came out on top. Moving to the next team fight, only two ultimates are on board, being Blizzard and Dragonblade. This lets me go into the final reason that Genji is so good in this meta. As much as the ultimate is memed on and has this stigma about being one of the worst DPS ults, it's actually really good in this meta, arguably one of the best. With Brig Juno being the ideal backline, there isn't an ultimate with enough sustain to completely shut out a blade like there would be with a transcendence or a sound barrier. Add on potential damage boosts and movement speed from Juno, and this ultimate has gone from meme material to the boogeyman. 
When you compare to May's ultimate, in which every single hero in the comp besides Cassidy has a tool to get out of, it's just infinitely better. Looking at this next fight, it goes pretty quickly, but demonstrates Alpha Yi's knowledge of Blizzard's shortcomings. Crazy Raccoons are given a lot of free space early on in the fight, so Bernard walks to point and Hisang to the bell on left. Violet tries to duel Hisang, but oversteps a bit and gets Suzu forced. Junbin then manages to walk up and chunk Bernard for most of their health bar. This hits the go button for Hisang, who pulls out the Dragon Blade. Knowing it's not worth saving the ultimate for anything aggressive, Alpha uses the Virgin Blizzard to force out the Chad Dragon Blade. Then they proceed to walk forward without Ice Block for some reason. For the final time, Alpha Yi gets punished for not having Ice Block and is eliminated. Realizing that they can't keep up with the tempo, and probably to get back to point faster, Alpha Yi now swaps to the Genji, mirroring Hisang. This team fight, however, is not over. After taking out Alpha Yi, Crazy Raccoons invest Deadeye and Zone Zeta Division off the point, trying to capture it to win the game. Hisang abuses the mobility and armor packs to remain very close to the backline of Zeta Division, and continues to do so even as they invest a Kitsune Rush and put a ton of pressure onto Jinbin, who is forced to use Fortify. On paper, when one Arisa has Fortify and the other doesn't, that should mean a huge enough cooldown advantage to push in aggressively. However, with a combination of Hisang's pressure on Zeta Division's backline and Shu dropping the Juno ultimate, Zeta Division isn't able to consolidate on this advantage and kites. While trying to punish this, Hisang oversteps and get punished by Bernard's ultimate and Finn using their Juno ult is all Zeta needs to clutch out this team fight, keeping them alive in the game. This final fight looks strikingly similar to the first, with Chorong and Hisang on the low ground off angle and the rest of Raccoons on the high ground, with Hisang touching point. Zeta Division know they're at a huge ultimate disadvantage, so they let Bernard anchor point while trying to farm up support ultimates. Crazy Raccoons want to end this game now, before those ultimates come online, so they run in as fast as possible, investing everything into Zeta Division's backline, winning the team fight and the game. As we've seen today, when compared to Mei, Genji has much better mobility, which allows him to take more aggressive angles and abuse Brigida's armor packs better. Mei can try to deny him, but she'll either get her ice block force and get eliminated, or slowly lose space to the combination of Genji and his tank walking forward. Finally, Genji's ultimate is better. All of these things show not only why the pros are all picking Genji instead of Mei, but how they're basically using him as a counterpick to her.